Hey everybody, welcome. It is Caleb and this is your Markdown tutorial video. So Markdown is one of the most valuable things to know as a developer. It's used for all kinds of different things such as writing technical documentation or creating websites and more. So we're going to start with the absolute basics and then work our way up to having a pretty good overview of the different things you can do with Markdown. So we'll start with the beginning. What is Markdown? According to GitHub, Markdown is a plain text format for writing structured documents based on conventions for indicating formatting. I think the easiest way to understand this is to see an example of Markdown in use. So if you are on Discord, you can say three backticks and then say this is some code and then three more backticks to end that section. And you can see this appears a little bit differently. We just used Markdown to describe the way we wanted our text to show up. So the three backticks is one example of something you can do inside of Markdown, but there's a lot of other stuff you can do. So let's go through some more use cases of Markdown so you really understand what it's used for. Here is an example of documentation created with Markdown. You can see different title sizes, code sections, even a little inline code section, some syntax highlighting. We got bold and italics, we have links, images, lists. All of this is done with a very minimal amount of markdown. So we're able to have a source of truth for how we want the document to be structured and then different tools could render this. So this is one example where we're rendering it into a web page and these are all web pages but another example would be inside of Notion which is a good tool for taking notes. Here I created some guides for my upcoming backend course. So you can go through here and you can see different sections with highlighting and links and lists. And it's a great way to keep things organized. Here is another example. And you can see we also have pictures and so forth. And yeah, this might just be a way for me to advertise my upcoming course, but if you want to access these notes for free, I will leave a link in the pinned comment. They're a work in progress, so consider this like a beta. Now another example is on GitHub, a readme.md, which is a markdown file, can be used for your profile to create a cool profile overview like this. You can see mine has some key links as well as a regularly updated latest YouTube videos list. It's also used to describe different repositories. So you can go into one of these repos and you can see I have a readme.md with a link to run some of our code in the cloud. So that's another cool thing you can do with a markdown file. Now I think markdownguide.org has a really good overview of all the different things you can do with markdown, which might be a good reference, but if you just want to go through a video with some descriptions, then I think this is the video for you. So the way we can get started is lots of different ways. You can experiment by, if you have Notion, you can do some markdown rendering, or if you have Jupyter, if you're doing any kind of Python or data science, you can do markdown rendering, or you can use Visual Studio Code. So inside of Visual Studio Code, you can create a new file, and we'll just save this intro.md. And you can do pound, space, and we'll just say introduction, and we'll save that. Now how do you run this, right? It says code language not supported or defined. Well, you can do command K, and then let go of command V, and that's going to bring up the preview of what this is going to be rendered as. So VS Code supports Markdown out of the box, and here is that shortcut that we just issued. If you're on Windows, it might be Control K. Additionally, if you don't want that shortcut, you can go into the command palette and type in Markdown, and then Markdown Open Preview, and that'll bring that there. Or even better, you can go back to the command palette and say Markdown Open preview to the side and there you go that's how you can open it from the command palette i'm sure there's also a lot of extensions so from the installed ones here you can see what i have i have markdown image which you might see an example of me using this later it makes it easy to insert an image into the markdown but this will allow us to go through and do basic markdown stuff so we did a title we can also do a smaller title Think of this as like an H1 if it was rendered in HTML. This is an H2. 
We can continue this with more pound signs. So this is even a smaller title, smaller title, smaller title, smaller title. Now seven does not work similar to how there's no such thing as an H7 in HTML. So we'll stop at six there. So that is the basics of titles. If you want to have different sections, what I recommend is to have two for the sections. So this could be another section and then again another section and then you can fill out these two sections here. Now to do a code section what you can do is again three back ticks just as you saw with Discord and you can say what language you want the highlighting to be by typing it out right there such as Python and then I'll just do some Python off the top of my head it's probably wrong Hello, name and you can see it does do some highlighting if I get rid of that Python there the highlighting goes away but you can also change it to different languages such as JavaScript, C++ maybe. Yeah, but this is obviously Python code, so we'll stick to Python. Now for comments, if you want to make a comment, so I'll make a comment section, you can do square brackets, this is hidden, and then a colon, pound, and it'll disappear. Additionally, you can do HTML comments, so this is what they look like. You have the less than sign, exclamation mark, dash dash, and then dash dash, greater than sign. This is an HTML comment. So you can put HTML in here, and that works fine. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Now, the new lines and spacing is very important with Markdown. So as an example, this is all one line. You can see, in the markdown file, it's multiple lines, but in the preview, it's all on one line. So you can actually use two spaces to bring stuff down to the next line. So now we could change this to say this is all separate lines, I guess. So that works. So we'll just name this section new lines. Now what about bold and italics? You can do this pretty simply with asterisks. For example, you can make something italic with single asterisks. And you see it's italic over here. Is that the proper way to say it? Italic? It's italicized. You can make something bold with two asterisks and you can make something both with three asterisks, like so. And again, we gotta watch our spacing here, so I'll put a period and two spaces after. Awesome. If you want to do links, the secret is to use square brackets followed by parentheses, where the link text shows up here and where you want it to go goes here. So for example, we could say check out my new site here. Obviously, I didn't create Google.com, but it's just an example. So you can click that and it'll bring up Google.com. Now, I personally think the hardest part about Markdown is working with images. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So if you can do any kind of extensions to make it easier or any kind of tips, if there's any you would suggest, drop those tips in the comment section below. Oftentimes, I want to put an image in a Markdown file, but it's just so much work that I'm just like, eh. I'm just gonna skip the image. But I've found a few ways to make it easier and I'm gonna show you those here. But first, let's just talk about how you create an image. So similar to links, you're going to use square brackets in parentheses, but you're going to start it with an exclamation mark where the alt text goes here. So to describe the image, let's just say desktop. And then the path to the image goes here. So let's say we were working inside of a folder. Here, let me save real quick. Let's go ahead and open a folder. We can create a folder, or I have this one here, example. I will open, and I'm going to move our file into that, so I'm gonna reveal in Finder. That's gonna bring us here, and then I'm just going to move intro.md into that directory. So now we have intro.md, and we can pick up where we left off. We will bring up the preview, and now let's create a new folder. We'll just call it images. 
we'll create a beautiful image of our desktop and I will drag that into our directory. And we'll just give it an easier name, desktop.png. All right, so now we have desktop.png. That'll go inside of the image folder. And we can now say image slash desktop.png. And there you go, it shows up. If for some reason the file didn't load, well then you're going to see the alt text desktop. So that's what that is used for. And I think it's also handy for accessibility for screen readers or any other tools like that. Now I'm going to show you a tool I use that can make this a little bit easier. It's an extension inside of Visual Studio Code. So I'll show you how I use that when I was working on my Markdown documentation site. So this is a different project now. Pretty much if I want to insert an image here easily, I can copy that image, right click, paste image. It'll ask me what I want to call that file, such as new desktop, and I can update the alt text like this, and it automatically creates the path to the image directory that I defined in the settings. Now when I preview this, the image will automatically show up right here. So that was a lot easier. I didn't have to go find the file or type in the path manually. So if you want to be able to do that, the extension I recommend you can find by typing in markdown image. And it's this one here, hansel.lin. If you want to find that exact one, you can actually type in the ID, which is image. And that'll bring you up the exact one, which you can install. And then when you have this installed, you can go into the extension settings. You can see how you can customize the file name for different variables. And you can define the local path for those images. So I said at the root of our project, inside of the static directory, and then inside of the image directory. So it's smart enough to take that and know that it needs to go up two directories and then into the static directory, and then into the image directory, and then the name of that file. So as you can see, that makes it a lot easier, and this is probably the way I would recommend it. That's the way I've been doing it. However, there's probably a better way out there. So if you have any suggestions, drop them in the comments section below. If you're using a tool such as Notion, you can just paste the image in there, and it just works. So that's even better if you're doing this for personal note taking, then you might just want to use a tool like Notion. Next up, I want to talk about lists. So lists are interesting. You can have numbered lists and unnumbered lists or unordered lists. So we can create a list with one and then every number after that can also be one and it'll automatically create one, two, three, which makes it a lot easier if you have to go and add something in the middle. So we'll say this is a list works great you can do an unordered list with hyphens the order doesn't matter and it works like that so this is lists last little thing I wanted to show you for basic markdown is how to do a block quote which is just a greater than sign and maybe something like special note or anything you want to call out you can do it that way now this has all been basic markdown. The markdown processor that you use may have additional things you can include, but it might not be standard markdown that's going to work anywhere. So for example, in my previous episode, we created the DocuSaurus documentation website. They have a lot of additional things you can do with the markdown. So if you wanna make a documentation website and you use a tool such as DocuSaurus, you can see that it uses MDX as the parsing engine for the markdown which can do much more than just parsing Markdown, like rendering React components inside your document. One really cool thing that you can do with this that I like is tabs. So this allows you to split up your content into different sections. So I'll show you this inside of a DocuSaurus Markdown file. So let's go ahead and copy this example here. And we're inside of a new Markdown file, we'll paste that there. And I'm going to use this to make some different code sections. So for example, we could say values JS. That one could be JavaScript. And we could have another one, say Python. I'll just keep it lowercase for consistency there. And we'll just call it Python. And I'm just gonna get rid of this third tab item. So you can create code sections in here. To do this, you'll need to 
make sure there is an additional space between the tab items. So we're rendering Markdown here. And you can do the three back ticks for a code section. Same thing down here. Back ticks. What would it be? Let's say console.log hello world and print hello world. And you can go in here and label these. So this could be JavaScript and this could be Python. I'm uh, not sure why this one's blue. I guess we'll just check to see if it looks right first. Yeah, this wasn't rendering right because we had this tab here, so back that off. We'll want to unindent everything here. And we'll check how this looks. JavaScript, console.log, hello world. Python, print, hello world. So that's how you can create a documentation page for multiple programming languages. You can do other things as well, such as create math equations with Kotec or however that would be pronounced. <laughs> Different tips. So for example, you can create a tip section like this. Paste that there. And you can see it shows up like this. And that's just scratching the surface of the different things you can do. So hopefully this video has been a good introduction getting you started with Markdown as well as seeing some of the possibilities. Obviously, we taught the basics. Now it depends on what use of Markdown you have as the Markdown processor might be different. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for upcoming videos and please be sure to subscribe. Let me know if there's any cool tips, tricks, and what other content you'd like to see in the future. Drop that in the comment section below. Peace out.